Alright guys, I am back with the review portion of the Astro Gaming Wireless Mixamp 5.8. Now the first thing I want to describe to you guys is the easy way that you set this up. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you what's on the back of the uh, TX unit uh, or like the receiving home base of the Astro Wireless Mixamp. So if you look right here, starting from the right, you have the power adapter plug. So you know, the power adapter plug that I showed you earlier, we'll just plug in right there. You have two USB ports. Now those are going to be used for future accessories. Uh, and then you also have an optical in, so that's what's going to be coming from the Xbox. And you also have an optical out. So while you can have the Xbox audio go out to your headset, let's say that you also have a home theater system, you can just have this act as kind of a pass-through. So whenever you aren't using your headset, you can have this just pass it right through your speakers without having to unplug and replug stuff. And then you have the auxiliary input. Uh, which you could put in like uh, an iPod or something like that, uh, you know, kind of like the regular Mixamp does. But also what you use for the auxiliary input is uh, that PS3 chat adapter. Uh, you just plug the PS3 cable from the USB port of the PS3 into the aux in of the TX. So there's that. So pretty much for the standard Xbox 360 setup, you would just uh, hook this up with an optical cable and then the power cable uh, and then you'd have this end basically connect wirelessly and to basically, you know, pair them together, you just have to turn them both on and then you hold the, uh, you hold the power button until it, uh, glows white and then they'll connect with each other. And then they're pretty much, you know, paired until you do that again and then it'll, you know, do a repairing. Alright, so once you have them paired, what you want to basically do is, this part is wireless, so nothing is going to be going into the back from here. But what you are going to have plug into it is your Xbox 360 controller and your headset of choice. So pretty much what happens, you have the headset port where the 4-pole 3.5mm plug goes. You have the USB port which is used just to charge it up if you're using the rechargeable battery pack. And then you have the 2.5mm port to connect to your Xbox 360 controller. So, you first you take the first, uh, the first cable. and you plug it in like so and then you take the second cable and connect it from the mix amp to your controller so there you go you're all set you pretty much have all these three items uh, just basically wired together and then you have the receiving base but over by the xbox 360 plugged into that now if you're using this for playstation 3 you just need to have that PS3 uh, adapter that I mentioned earlier that I showed you. Uh, I've got it right here, so pretty much it's a USB to the 4-pole. And what that'll do is that'll just be another plug for the base, but that's actually, you have less cables to worry about for the, uh, for the actual RX portion, just basically because you just need your headset connected to your mix amp and then you're all set all the voice stuff is handled over there so nothing has to plug into your PlayStation 3 controller which I personally like. I actually like the PS3 setup better than the Xbox 360 uh, setup. Now, on the performance of the wireless mix amp, I was really impressed when using this. Uh, when I used the Turtle Beach X41, uh, it actually exceeded my expectations for wireless audio uh, because it was a fairly clean signal. However, one of the problems that I had when using it was I use a Wi-Fi uh, internet for my Xbox Live gaming, so when I was using the X41, even when I would use like a hard-lined headphone into the decoder box, it was still giving off a wireless signal that would interfere with my uh, Wi-Fi signal for my Xbox Live. This was making me go yellow bar and connecting, uh, disconnecting out of games. Now, what Astro uh, was advertising with their new wireless mix amp is using a 5.8 gigahertz uh, frequency channel. So pretty much with this, it's uh, you know it's a channel that not a lot of other devices would run off of. Uh, I think my Wi-Fi is running off of 2.4. I know the Xbox 360 controller runs off of 2.4, so it doesn't interfere with that basically. But you know, I figured I'd had the best uh, environment to put this to the test because I've had other products in the past uh, kind of fail in that respect because it interfered with my internet connection. When I was using the wireless Mixamp 5.8, I had no problems at all connecting the games. I uh, was full four green bars the entire time, and I had a very good signal. Uh, 
pretty much I had no pops or anything like that, no interference at all. It was really nice. The 5.8 worked out very well. Whatever they seem to have done with this, it works because when I was playing, I had a nice clean signal. When everything was supposed to be silent, I would get silence. There wasn't any background humming or anything like that and the sound was clear. Uh, when I was doing A to B testing with my uh, regular mix amp, there was like no noticeable uh, quality degradation. The only thing I could say for the actual signal um, is in gaming I noticed that the sound signature changed. When I was using my Astro A40s going from wire to wireless, uh, the sound signature had a little bit of uh, the highs became a little bit brighter, almost harsh. So when I was using like a silenced FAMIS in Black Ops, uh, it was very uh, sibilant. It just had a hint of that when switching over from wire to wireless. It just had a little bit more of that. Uh, so then when I switched over to my A30s, I was thinking this would actually work out because if you've seen my review on the Astro A30s, uh, while it does have a balanced sound, I felt that the highs were a little bit veiled. So I figured that, you know, with the switch to the wireless mix amp, you know, having the ups raised a bit, it would actually uh, balance out, and I was correct. So I think that the A30 and the wireless mix and 5.8 are a good uh, match in my opinion. It just seems that they balance each other out a bit, you know? So I really was a fan of uh, using these two together. Now, when I was using the wireless mix amp for music, I was using my headphones, like my, uh, in addition to my A30s, I was using my Audio-Techna AD700s and my Sennheiser HD 595s. One of the things that the wireless mix amp includes as a feature is a bass boost, which is this right button right here. And, uh, you know, it does exactly what it says. It gives you a bass boost. So it's not the biggest difference in the world. It's a very subtle bass boost, which I actually like. I didn't, I didn't want it to be, like, overpowering or anything. Um, I have it off when I use my A30s. I felt that like the A30s bass was good enough for the music. For my 8700s, I turned it on, and, you know, I, I liked what I was hearing. Now, when I was listening to music, I had the same experiences that I had when listening to gaming. I had a very clean signal. When it would get to the parts of song where it would just be, you know, one person's vocal and then maybe like one instrument playing, you could just really hear that silence in the background, which was really great. There was no like processing sounds or anything like that. It was beautiful. Uh, the only thing that I could say about uh, music was when listening to very busy parts where like a lot of instruments and vocals and drums are going on at the same time you kind of lose a little bit of definition and clarity when having all of those but other than that I mean the music was totally listenable to uh, I was really impressed I you know for the X41's I wasn't really very keen on listening to that much music on it pretty much because my only option was listening to music on the X41's which I didn't really want to do so with this, I uh, was able to use my A30s and my 8700s and my HD 595s, which was really cool. Now the next thing I wanted to go over about the mix amp is its range. Uh, when I, while I was listening to music, I was walking around my room, and I'd say I could walk from one end of the room to the other in about seven steps or so, maybe a little bit more. Anyways. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't get any distort, like any distortion or anything like that or any interference while doing that. You can feel free to walk around, which is really awesome. And I actually walked downstairs while having my headphones on. And it's about 12 steps to get to my stairs from here. And it's my steps, I think I have like 15 or so. And I was getting a uh, clean signal up until after the 12th step. So 12 steps away and 12 steps down. That's when I started getting the signal lost. Um, kind of near in the end of that, though, there were kind of pops when it was getting the interference, when it was, like, shaking around. But, you know, it, it was pretty far away. I mean, I've walked around the house with my Xbox 360 controller and my stock headset. It didn't reach nearly as far as the uh, mix amp did. And what was actually kind of funny is that once I was actually walking further away, when I got into the kitchen, pretty much directly below this room, I ended up getting the signal back again because it was close enough at that point. So... I think the range is really nice on this thing. Uh, you don't really have to go that far away from your TV with it, but you have the option to. Alright, so basically when it's all said and done, I'm just a really big fan of this product. Now, you've seen my other mix amp. I've got the wired mix amp, and it's kind of cemented its place into my Xbox 360 setup. Uh, I like using my Astros on it. I, you know, My Xbox 360 is right there, and my seat's like right here. 
everything's within arm's reach and my monitor is right there. I'm all set for up here basically so for me the wireless mix amp uh, isn't really necessary for my setup for Xbox 360 gaming but downstairs I have a PlayStation 3 set up in my living room where it's you know on the TV shelf and everything and my couch is like 10 feet away so this is going to be you know finding its way right in that little area because I can have my headset right there I can plug it into it and then like I said I like the PS3 setup a little bit better because it's only the one cord going into the mix amp then it's just you know clipped onto your pocket or whatever and you're good to go the PlayStation 3 controller is you know free to move by itself and this is just staying over where the uh, PlayStation 3 is so that's basically where this is going to be going so once I play uh, Call of Duty or Killzone and everything like that on my PlayStation 3 downstairs that's what I'm going to be using this for to get the competitive advantage without being tethered to the TV so pretty much if you're looking for convenience uh, don't think that you're sacrificing like you know anything to go wireless with the wireless mix amp the only thing that I can think off the top of my head is that you're sacrificing daisy chaining for it um, but this is really meant for like a home setup uh, I can see people who do already have the wired mix amp getting this for like an additional game console because I know that some people like myself will have their own little gaming setup with a gaming monitor but then they'll also have like a casual gaming setup with a big screen TV and everything so this would be for that basically so if you're somebody who plays in their home a lot um, you don't really you, may, you might not be looking to go to MLG events or whatever so you wouldn't need to daisy chain this would be great because this is just you know a lot of convenience to be able to not be tethered now if you are going to MLG events and everything then you might want to get the wired mix amp so you could like maybe bring it you know say you have a coach so he can daisy chain in on the conversation and everything or if you like to have the MLG kind of set up at home like with the monitor and everything because I know a lot of guys on the MLG forums they're going to be using wired controllers like the Razer Anza or the stock Microsoft 360 controller so if you're using a wired controller and you have it you know basically plugged into this what is the wireless accomplishing basically it's just that that's why I wouldn't really use it for my setup because I also use a wired as well as a wireless uh, so either way I'm, and when I'm sitting right here I'm basically tethered near the 360 anyway so wireless doesn't really do much for me in that case but like I said if you're in a living room environment then it's really handy alrighty so that'll pretty much just finish up all my thoughts on the Astro Gaming Wireless Mixam 5.8 I'm gonna be continuing to use this and just kinda report everything that I find uh, you know as I use it you know going forward into the future any kind of nitpicky things that I find or you know things that you know I discover that I find handy uh, you know I'm gonna be mentioning that and everything over time but uh, if I did miss anything and you guys have any additional questions please feel free to ask because I'll be happy to answer them because sometimes I do miss you know some details to go over so with that being said if you do have a question either leave a comment down below or you know send me a message on Twitter and I'll get back to you you know when I can uh, so if you enjoyed this video please hit the like button down here and the subscribe button up there and you know check out my YouTube channel because I'm gonna have a lot more reviews I already have a lot of reviews on gaming headsets and other gaming accessories and if you aren't following me on Twitter follow me at uh, www.twitter uh, slash MLG Steggy uh, where I'll basically be posting updates to my reviews and what's coming in the future and everything like that as well as answering questions that people have. So, once again, thank you for watching another one of my videos. I will see you next time with my next review or unboxing. See you later, guys.